and welcome back to our channel. We're the Garso Twins. I'm Britta and I'm Carly. We'd love it if you would subscribe down below. We do a lot of beauty reviews, roundups, get ready with me's. Uh, we have a background in product development so we kind of view everything through that lens um, and are pretty particular. Yeah. Today we're doing our July favorites. This video is a little late. <laughs> yeah. We're actually we watching it. film and edit this in one day. Yeah. Because we were on vacation and we had so many things in July that we were like we cannot skip this month. We have really good things mm -hmm. we want to talk about so let's get to it. Okay, so we're gonna try to go through everything pretty quickly. And as always, if we have like a demonstration or a more in-depth review over on Instagram, we'll link those reels or posts down below. Like for instance, the Maybelline Colossal Mascara, I did a reel trying this on, but I rediscovered this and I absolutely love it. It's like $6 on Amazon. I used to wear this exclusively back when we first moved to California like 13, 14 years ago. This was my mascara of choice because it was cheap at the drugstore and it just did everything I wanted it to do and I rediscovered it. It's voluminous, it separates, it doesn't clump, it wears all day. It flakes a little bit towards the end of the day but nothing crazy. It doesn't irritate my eyes, it's really black and it's cheap. Like it is everything I want in a mascara and more. I absolutely love it. You have to try this. Okay, when Lisa Eldred releases any lipsticks, yeah. we are like, eyes on the prize but we've been so good at resisting because yeah. we just don't want to spend the money but when she released velvet bloom on its own we were like the need we need that we need that color it is like a pink red it is super stunning it's her true velvet formula which is our favorite lipstick formula it's matte it's soft it's blurring i did a reel on it i'll link that down below but this was such a must. And, and I would still say this is my favorite lipstick formula. It's my favorite lipstick for formula too. And we decided it's to buy so it soft. and share it because we it is kind of expensive. They're nearly $40. But um, I think that we never made it through a full lipstick. So yeah. I can share it. But now I'm like, oh, this might be my favorite one. I know. It's so it's pretty. So I actually pretty. haven't gotten to wear it yet because you took it to New York. Oh, that's right. That's so right. the sharing's not really working out, but we'll see. Uh, next up is the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. This one I did a review on, a link below as well. Um, this is great. I never tried their original putty primer because I usually don't like thick primers and I had been using the L'Oreal Studio Secrets primer for a while. Jen Phelps recommended that and that one does really blur the pores and I still like that but it is a really thick product like feels super silicone-y and it's been so hot and humid in LA that I was like I want something that will help keep me looking flawless for longer but not feel like an extra layer on my skin and so when I saw they released this I picked it up because it was only $10 and I love it. It's a really fluid thin texture. It doesn't feel like dimethic even though it is basically just silicones and I just put it in my t-zone like a thin layer and I feel like any foundation I put over top just looks really really smooth it really helps to have my makeup wear longer during the day I will say it's not as blurring as like the studio secrets one that's like pure silicone but it does what I need it to do on an everyday basis and it's so affordable I love it a fragrance I picked up this month. So Britta and I, probably like a month ago, were in Sephora and we were smelling the new Five Cents fragrance brand. They have like five different perfumes, I think, mm -hmm. but only three of them were out in Sephora. And this was one of them. It's Catch Feelings. It says lychee, grape, ruby, grapefruit, damask, rose, vetiver, roots, and suede. And I just couldn't stop thinking about it. So then I later on ordered it off of Sephora. And it's just, it does not smell like a rose. I, they like really market it as a rose. To me, it's like woody, but fresh, but there's like some depth to it. It's just really nice. It's like so nice. I'm really glad I bought it. The only thing I will say, yeah, it smells like the Baccarat Rouge. Yeah, it smells like, it smells a lot like Baccarat Rouge. Mm -hmm. But it's lighter, which I like because we have the dupe, the Red Temptation dupe from Zara. And every time I spray that, it just like is so strong for me. I just realize it's too strong. So this one's a lot lighter and I just really like it. I will say it doesn't last as long on the skin as I would like. So like I generally will like spray it on my clothes mm -hmm. and then I'll smell it throughout the day on my clothes. I wish it lasted a little bit longer on my skin. But I've worn this like nearly every day. We went to New York and I just brought this and it was easy. Like um, the actual sprayer is really nice. It's actually not like a lot of sprayers that I've tried on fragrances. It like really locks in there and it's a really fine mist. So yeah, and the cap didn't come off with traveling. It's really great. Okay, the lip product I wore in New York more than anything else was the Notarium Phytoglow Lip Balm in the shade Plum. This is my favorite, but I do like them all that we have. I'm going to link the try with Carly down below. Uh, I don't know why we were sleeping on these for so long. 
This formula is so good. I'm wearing it right it's now. It's so good. Over a liquid lipstick, and I just like that it's not too sticky or too shiny. Like, I feel like some, like, lip oils or lip glosses that I have are super, super shiny, but that also means they're, like, super thick and not have too much cushion but it's going to like you're gonna really feel it on mm -hmm. your lips whereas this you feel it on your lips but it's like the perfect middle of the road where it has cushion but it's not too thick making it not overly shiny and it wears really well over like a lip liner like i said i'm wearing it over liquid lipstick right now and it wears really well throughout the day like it stays on and I love it. The plum is the one that I wear the most because it's the most like neutral, easy to wear over anything really. But I love all the shades and it has like a slight vanilla hit smell to it. Like I don't, the, this is so good. Like I feel like it's kind of a dupe for the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Bomb. Like they feel really similar to me. They both have that vanilla scent. And this one's like half the price. I think I like it more. I know. What I like more. I've been reaching for it more too. And I really like the applicator. We think it's so cute. They like color match the applicator to the tube um, because that's not cheap to do. So like the fact that they added that detail was really nice as well. Um, adorable. This is the Beauty Pie Super Healthy Hair 7 Oil Elixir. I've raved about this I think in a weekly faves. But this is just an amazing hair oil. It is like... There's silicones in it, so it smooths, um, and it also is thick. Like, I love my Olaplex hair oil, but I described that one. It's, like, much thinner. There's no silicones in it, so that one, I feel like, really does soak into the hair, like, kind of, like, replenish moisture from within, but it doesn't do a lot for, like, taming frizz or making your hair, like, protected and shiny. That's where this comes in. It, like, really adds, like, a barrier against, like, heat styling and just, like, smooths out any flyaways. It makes your hair really shiny. Um, it smells really good. And I love the dosage because I actually don't need a lot. And sometimes when you pump, it's a pump. Um, too much comes out, but not a lot comes out, so you can really control how much you're putting on your hair. And I really love this. I can see why it was out of stock for so long. I'm going to keep repurchasing it, but I also think this will last me yeah, a long huge. time. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's 1.7 ounces. It's really amazing. And glass bottle. We'll leave our discount mm -hmm. code for a beauty pie down yeah. below, too. Okay, we've also really been loving the Bonjou Beauty La Bomb. This has been like an everyday essential I know. for I've me. Like, I'm like, oh, well, I've almost used mine up. Okay, well, I should say I primarily use mine under my eyes morning and night. So I'll do my normal skincare in the morning and do like my vitamin C eye cream and then put this over top and like to lock in the eye cream and then put it like under makeup. So it really preps my under eyes for concealer and makeup. And then at night, I'll just do the same thing and use this kind of like in place of an eye cream because um, it just really hydrates the under eyes so well. And I swear to you, like my under eyes, seem like they have maybe slightly less fine lines or like they're just a little more like plumped up. They yeah, look a little I should less pivot to aged. using it just as that because I was using it all over my skin. It's been really irritated and so it was really helping with that but I want to make it last but also when we just were traveling I like brought it on the plane and I put it under my eyes yes, like, around too. my nose like you know, it gets so dry in those airplanes, and it helped so much. And the packaging is super portable. Yeah, we really love bombs, like, in yeah. general. Um, like, we really like the Ren one, too. But there's something about this texture. They say it's, like, a serum balm moisturizer in one. And I think that's true because it's not, like, a balm. Kind of, like, it's not, like, a cream. Yeah, or, like, yeah, some balms are, like, more cream-like. And we like those, but they're not, like, what I want it to be. And some balms, I feel like, too are waxy. too waxy and oily. Yeah. So, like, you'll start to break it down and then it becomes too oily on the skin this one is like so perfect in the sense that it's not it's a typical bomb texture like you can press your finger in and it like has it breaks um but it's not too slippy it's like the perfect blend of waxes and oils so that it moisturizes without being like too emollient mm -hmm. it's just the most unique texture i know it's expensive but if you're looking for kind of like a one and done i think that this would be great yeah i that's a good tip for the under eyes though like mm -hmm. i was like oh my god i've used if, usually you guys know Berta uses so much more product than me yeah yeah, and I'm like, I've used so much more because I keep using it on my whole face. Because I've been using the Cure Wise Balm on my under eyes, and that one ended up, I think it's, like, old, and so it kind of ended up turning, like, a little gritty, and, like, like that, like, the oils are coming through, so it's, like, too emollient, and so I switched to using this, and I stopped using that because I'm like, it's probably expired anyway, 
um, and this is this texture is like unbeatable yeah and real quick I want to touch on these Birkenstocks because I've been on a journey with Birkenstocks I ordered the big buckle ones during the Nordstrom anniversary sale and I there's been there's some discrepancy here because I feel like I posted about this and some people were like my big buckle Birks are really comfortable and then a lot of other people agreed with me that they're really hard and I think they may have changed them because the ones that I ordered had leather on the like footbed instead of this type of leather like like this is more like raw leather I, I it guess was cork or cork whatever or maybe yeah. I think it's leather mm -hmm. like suede yeah um and it had like the actual like leather on the bottom so not only were they stiff and like hard but my feet were like <laughs> I could just tell I was gonna get a blister immediately because there was no give it was like holding my foot in place and so it was gonna create friction like unwanted friction and so I'm like these are so cute but like I know they're gonna be so uncomfortable so I returned those and then we were in Nordstrom and I saw these and I had seen these online they're just the Arizona soft footbed Bed. and I saw them online and they came in this white color but I didn't realize they had like a texture to them which I like like my black Birkenstocks have that as well and so it kind of elevated them a little bit in my opinion and so I was like oh these are cute and I tried them on so I ordered them immediately um, and I wore them in New York like I broke them in for maybe a day and it walked 20 30,000 steps in them and had no issues like no blisters they're so comfortable from the get-go and they are one of the more affordable styles because they're like the original Arizona soft footbed so I'll link them down below but I love them and they still look really white even though I wore them in like a dirty <laughs> city walking around. Um, so highly recommend if you're looking for a new pair. Okay, now our book favorites of the month. Mine is The Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand. Um, we love Ellen's books. They're always perfect for summer and mm -hmm. this is her new one that she released this summer. So this book follows Hollis Shaw. She is a food blogger who's like really blown up in her, I think she's like in her 60s? Maybe her 50s. Yeah. Um, and so you find out early on in the book that her husband has passed away and she learns about this other lady that had a tragic death in her family that did this five star weekend where you invite your five best friends from different areas of your life, different like genres of your life, like your childhood best friend, your college best friend, your high school best friend, your current best friend, your like kids growing up together mm -hmm. best friend, and you all have a weekend together. And so she's like, you know, grieving and she has put her vlog on hold and she's like, I think this would be really good for me. So she puts on a five star week and she lives on Nantucket and she invites them all to her like beautiful beach home. And obviously she's a food blogger. So she, mm -hmm. the, the way they describe the food in this book and every book she does, every book she does, but this one particularly, I was like mouth watering, yeah. salivating over everything they describe. So she makes these like lavish meals and they just have this one time, but there is a twist. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but they, it's, it's also like a journey within all the women. Like you yeah. learn about all of their struggles. Um, in their own lives, not just Hollis's grieving. And I really loved that they were all dealing with something. It just shows like everyone deals with stuff. Um, and it was also like a great like friendship book and like yeah. true friends and like will always come back together and like love you and be there for you. Um, it was just amazing if you like a summer read on Nantucket and female friendship, you would like this book. Okay, and then my book pick for the month is The Fourth Wing. I know everyone's talked about this um, by Rebecca Yarrow and it lived up to the hype for me. I don't like fantasy books generally, but I was like, okay, everyone's raving about this. I'll give it a go. So it's, I'm going to like try to do top level synopsis. But I'm honestly, honestly, right now it's so long. I really, you should say that. It's really long and I, the beginning was confusing. Like basically it's about Violet and she is, she, oh, so it said she's 20 years old. I actually didn't know how old she was. Um, and yeah. she says it. Okay. And so she be becomes part of the, she wants to be a scribe. There's like these four quadrants in this mystical land and her mother is a like lieutenant or emperor. Like she's high up in the ranks and her sister is also a fighter. And so she wants to be a scribe her whole life, but her mother makes her join the, the riders, the quadrant. riders quadrant. And so you see her on her first day and basically it's like test after test and all these tests 
you could die. It's kind of like the Hunger Games. Yeah, kind of like the Hunger like Games. The games or like the the challenges the are challenges. like to death. Yeah, except for like in in the Hunger Games, I think that they could kill each Inten other and intentionally. intentionally, and that's like not something that they're supposed to I do. I think they had to because in the Hunger Games, only one could survive. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like fighting for your life. Where here, you're kind of fighting against yourself mostly. Um, but anyway, so you're, they're put to the test over the course of like a semester and they're paired with a dragon. That's why they're called the riders because they ride dragons. So Violet is paired with a dragon and then the dragon is kind of like what they use to fight in combat. So then they train on the dragon and by the end of like, by the time they graduate, then they become a rider. And then obviously there's like risk of death as you like, because they fight in wars, in basically. wars and battles. Um, but you follow Violet through the treacherous... <laughs> like semester and you see her with two men um dane who's like her childhood friend who is the leader of her wing or he's like the he's the i'm squad, really confused by the, the squad leader yeah I he's think. the squad leader and then zayden is i guess the zayden's wing leader. a wing leader and so he i don't um, think you can get higher as like a fighter yes <laughs> this is like amazing then the wing leader yeah. but you can in terms of like government which is what her mom is yes exactly. she's like beyond beyond the riders she's like in government yeah and so he leads like the whole fourth wing whereas dane just leads her squad of like a pretty small amount it's kind of a love triangle i don't want to get into it but we've got everything here we've got suspense we've got intrigue we've got romance we've got like heart pounding battles. Mm -hmm. So it really has like all the things needed for a really good story. And I think that's the thing I loved about it was like her storytelling. Like I was just pulled in and like wanted to keep reading to find out what happens. There is a twist at the end that I did guess. I will say that, um, but it's really, really good and worth the read. Yeah, I'm at like 80% right now and I can see where this is going mm -hmm. or I, I think I know, but I don't know, but um, I, I guess I don't want to be negative, but I have I read another Rebecca Yaros work and I thought it was too long and I think that this book is oh, too long. Oh, it's very long. I, I just, think some things could have been cut. Yeah, I agree. I You guys know I love the Kamoran Strike series and those are my favorite books and those are like a thousand pages, but there's so much detail in the way that those books are written that I feel like do kind of like, like they give you character background and like they contribute to the plot. Whereas this, I think sometimes it wasn't really doing that. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like detail for no reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's everything this month. We told you it was a busy but great month. We had lots of good things to discuss. And we are so excited for August. Yes. It is one of our favorite months. I don't know about you guys, but it's kind of like, it's still hot here, but it's kind of like the start of fall. Yeah. And it gets you, it's like really prepping us for our businesses and to like getting into Q4 and like yeah. lots going on. So we're really excited for August. Let us know what you're most excited about in the month ahead since we put this up late anyway. Yeah. Let us know what you're excited about in August.